The first thing you got to keep in mind when you're taking pictures of a vehicle is to clean it, to wash it, make sure it's clean and shiny because, well, you know, you want your product to look good. And uh, if you drive it to a location, remember have an extra towel or something just to, you might pick up little things here and there, so just make sure it's clean. Always use a circular polarizer filter, a CPL filter. And that's because a shiny car, it's like a giant mirror. And there's reflections everywhere. So by being able to reduce some of those reflections, you're gonna get much better images and it's gonna give you that true color of the car itself without so much of the sky or foreground and anything that reflects. You can see here, I pick up the road, but if I, I'll adjust the polarizer and you can see how even on the windows or different things, you get more of that true color of the vehicle itself. As far as what lens to use, I like a zoom lens and a telephoto lens, like the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200. And I stay away from the wide angle. The wide angles distort. So you're not gonna get a true representation of what the car looks like. The front might be too extended or the rear, it just, it just looks kind of strange. So by zooming in, st stepping back and zooming in, you're gonna get a much better result. Car makers spent a lot of time and money to design a vehicle to make it look good. So why not take a little bit of time and emphasize those details? If you modify the car in any way, focus on those details as well because it adds a lot to the final product. Remember, when you're taking pictures, you're telling a story, especially when you're taking a picture or multiple pictures of one item, you're telling a complete story. You could also try something that's called panning, and that's when you move your camera side by side using a slow shutter speed. You can also try what's called panning, and that's when you move the camera side to side in the same direction that the vehicle is moving in. Using a slow shutter speed, then you're gonna add movement and life to that image. Let me show you some examples. Panning shots are fun to do, but remember to keep your shutter speed on uh, fairly slow, like a 45th or a 30th of a second. And then also on, on rapid fire burst on your, on your camera. That way you can take 100 pictures and you'll get maybe five good ones. <laughs> it's fun, but it takes a lot of practice. Also, remember to shoot through things. Like right now we're in the, in the forest, in the woods, so I'm shooting through some trees and it just frames the subject a little bit better. It gives it a different effect. And it's very important to do the same thing inside the car. If you get in the back seat and shoot through, open a window, shoot the interior through the window, it adds a natural frame and it looks a lot better. The headlights are like the eyes of the vehicle and it is very important to always focus on those eyes. Right now I'm using a very classic uh, composition, which is the front and then two thirds of the back. And you always wanna have the wheel facing towards the camera because it looks cool that way. But also remember to do the same thing from the back so you can get the back and two thirds of the front of the, of the side. Something else you can do to bring your photography to another level is using a smoke bomb. These are made by Hinola Gay. I bought them online. No sponsorship, no nothing. I just like the quality. The smoke lasts a long time and it looks really cool. Let me show you. How is the vehicle gonna be used? Who's using it? Things like this that make you give it a, an emotion or a feeling behind the, the collection of images. So how would you use a pickup truck? I got an idea. So, 
These are the props that I have. I borrowed the shirt, it's a little bit big. <laughs> uh, maybe it doesn't truly represent a pickup driver. It's an electric power saw and I have a, a man bun. But I did spend about a week growing this face thing that maybe that'll help me relate a little bit more to these guys. On the other hand, look at this. This stuff is super soft and fuzzy inside. It's awesome, I love it. Maybe I'll start wearing these more often. One more prop that I haven't used yet. Watching every pickup owner that I know, they all have a dog, and that's because there's a ton of room in the trucks for pets. So I have to say that definitely my favorite lens for this type of photography is the 70 to 200. A wide angle distorts the front a little bit too much. The 24 to 70 just doesn't compress the background as much as I want it to. But it, the 70 to 200 is great because I can step back, zoom in, and eliminate distracting elements in the sky, just giving it more focused attention onto what the, uh, the subject is, in this case a truck. Some of you might recognize this truck from two other videos that I've made, but it needed help. It needed a little bit of uh, engine work and it needed some body work as well. To me, everything that you own deserves respect. It, it deserves attention. Otherwise, why own it? Why bother? I have to get Ken and everybody else at Southern Oregon Auto a big shout out because it is an amazing job in bringing the engine and all the interior components back to back to life. I don't know anything about mechanics besides calling AAA. They'll come pick it up and take it there. They'll take care of it and I trust them. Uh, this is not sponsored. <laughs> I just, like I said, I like when I find something that I like, I recommend it. Uh, and then Lonnie, Lonnie's auto and Lonnie's truck and auto, he did the paint job. He did a great job as well. It looks like new. It's a 2000 Ford F-150. It's awesome, it sounds and it looks great. I wanted to release this video about three months ago at the time you're watching this. But as I said, the truck was in the garage and it needed a lot of work, so it was there longer than I expected. And then I ran into another problem. See, there's another YouTuber who has a man bun and this stuff on his face. And he's also a photographer who recently just restored his red Stepside F100 Ford pickup. So I had to go back to the drawing board because there's way too many similarities and no, I'm not copying him. The first clue is I'm not wearing skinny jeans. So no, this is not a copy. That's why I made mine more of a tutorial, a photography tutorial. See, I came across some random strange fact here. When the typewriter was invented, it was invented by five people five unrelated people at the same time. Now think about how many people got the idea, just didn't act on it. And I think that's what happened here. This guy acted before I had a chance to. <laughs> that got me thinking about this random chain of events and how we receive information from anywhere and how many people just don't act on it. So it doesn't matter when you, when you do, just do, follow through, get your stuff out there, get your ideas out there. There's a lot of people with the same thoughts that just don't put them out. And why not? We're all here to have a good time. So I wanted to take this video to another level, which I hope I did, but that's it. I'm going to leave you with that random thought. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye.